so hard for. You can wait for better weather. If you have hard sites, you see there the vinegar Ulen. You can see it's not quite as obvious anymore because the color's changed again. There's a, a kind of almost a red tint to the, the rock, and that's coming from a succulent that grows there. And that's what this butterfly needs for its uh, nutrition. And that's what it lives from. I was here yesterday and there were all kinds of people working. Oh, I don't know. The Walnut. Unsere Walnüsse, haben die eine Sonderzeichnung? Ja, die haben nur mal Untersonnen. Ja, neither one of us know. I, I know, that, I know, that, I don't think they're black, but I cannot imagine a, a law-abiding German saying they would be English Walnuts. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, yeah, right? Especially now that they want out of the EU. That's, yeah. that's like ordering an English muffin in Ireland. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, Tiblish is not known for their wines, but they are known for their fruits. And another thing they're known for is the lovely view that they have to the village of Koberngandorf, which is where I spent 20 years of my life. <laughs> and it's and it is a it's a pretty little village. You'll see it, it's coming up now. You know, Dieblich, uh, we always laugh with the people here. They don't have very, they, every village here will have a wine fest during the summer. Mm -hmm. And people, when they come to Dieblich, they kind of say, well, we're not real proud of our wines, but that's okay. <laughs> and a friend of mine said, well, it, uh, somebody from Coburn said, well, the people from Dieblich have a huge advantage. They have a nice view to Coburn Gondorf. And Coburn is a very, very, very old village. The castle that you see up on the hillside there is from the 13th century. And it's it is just a ruin. You can follow along the, the, the ridge there. Oh, There's yeah. a, a, a path of the of Christ going up there. So like a uh, stations of the Christ going up the hill, and you can just see the rooftop of the St. Matthew's Chapel. Oh, when yeah. you're coming back this way, we get a better view of it. From here, it's kind of covered from the trees. It's a very historic town. You can see down to the left, about halfway up the hill, there is a clock tower there. Mm -hmm. you see it? They built it high like that so Dieblich could see that clock tower. They didn't have a clock tower of their own over here, so they let them, they built it up high so they could show their wealth over there. And if you look very closely, you can see that the church right in front of the clock tower has a tower on it. It's built in the 19th century, but it's crooked. The thing doesn't stand 100% straight up and down. See how it's crooked? Yeah. It's leaning back. Yeah. Now Coburn has four different castles, the Niederburg, or the lower castle, the St. Matthew's Chapel, and the other two are but the far end of town. I'll point them out in a moment. The area of the bank that you see right now, right here next to the river, is an area that's reserved <coughs> for the habitat for a, a, a water snake that almost went extinct, but they were able to put in a, 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 some stones there and, and save that uh, river bank enough for the snake to repopulate. He's a harmless snake. He won't do anything nearly lost him as the part of the uh, ecology of the area. Now we're going to cross over this uh, golden bridge, in fact they call it the gold bridge, and on the other side of the bridge is where the other two castles from Coburn Gondorf are. The first one is called Schloss Liebig, and being a Schloss, it was built not for military, it was built more to show wealth, it's like something that shows off a little bit and the, the other castle is more of a borg and it's a it's a water castle built right on the shoreline of the Mosel and when they built the road to go up the Mosel they didn't know what to do to get around this castle so they ended up going through it. So from right here you can get a good view of both castles. First of all the, the stone castle and then right beyond it down by the river you see the it's more of a timbered house right on the river there. And you can see how the road is going through it. That's the water castle. Yeah. So, and now we, we go up, and from here, you get a fabulous view.
you to the Matthias Capella. And the Matthias Capella is a very special one. It's, you can see it way up at the top there. It's a six-sided chapel. It has, um, the, the, the model for it came from the Orient. And they brought not only the, a remnant, a rep, uh, a, a relic from the St. Matthew, but they brought the design for that chapel back. And 30 years ago, that's where I actually got married. Oh, wow. Up there at that chapel. Back then, it didn't look quite as nice as it does today. They did an awful lot of work up there to make it uh, able to, yeah, be there. They had a problem. They had put some supports from the side, to, and they thought they were helping the chapel. Turned out that that was actually causing more damage than good, so they had to take those away and redo the actual foundation underneath. So they had to lift with just millimeters to spare to get the whole thing back down to a solid base. Now, Coburn Gondorf is not only a, uh, one of the larger towns here in the Terrassen Bosel, it is also kind of our county seat. We have the administration uh, for this area is in Coburn, and also the uh, regional school. And in Germany, we have a very different education system what I'm used to, for sure. It took me a long time to figure it all out. When you're a, a young child here, you can start going to kindergarten at the age of three. You go to kindergarten until you're six. When you're six, you can start grade school. And that first four years, you go to a, 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 a school where you have one teacher and one class those first four years. It's a very stable environment, but if you have a problem, I'm, I'm, I really don't like this part of it. If you have a problem with a, a child, you end up, that problem stays with that child, never has a chance to change out from uh, the teacher or from the fellow students. And at the end of that third class, they determine whether a child should be university material or whether that's somebody who could become more of a tradesman. And then you get basically funneled into the school system that way. If you're, that's, that's when they're 10 years old? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And, wow. they, and they basically, uh, from that point on, you can either go to a gymnasium in the city, which is where you can qualify to go on to university, or you can stay right here in town and get what they call um, the regional school. And when you're in the 10th grade, you can stop going to school and start into a trade school. So you don't have to learn a lot of stuff that you don't need. If you stay here, you can go right into a trade and start earning money and start going to school to learn a trade as an apprentice or whatever. And if you go to school in the city, you need to go there for 13 years altogether. So from the, they actually have a 13th year here. And at the end, you take a very intense exam. And then due to what you have uh, as a grade point average, you can actually attend whatever university you want to here for free. So they do make sure that you know how to study, that you know how to learn. And a lot of the grade that they get is also built in with participation. If you don't participate, your grades won't be high enough. So people here are kind of forced into learning how to not just study well, but how to participate. And I think that's that part's actually good. And it's also amazing to me how many students are attending university here. You do have to have pretty good grades to continue. They don't let you just kind of freeload. Now you see the grape or the rose bushes that are planted all along here. Um, are quite often planted by the winemakers, not just because they're very pretty, but because they have uh, a vulnerability to the same funguses that the grapevines have. So if, the, if they can drive along and say, oh, oh, my roses look bad, my grapevines must look just as bad. Now we do spray here. They need to spray at least eight times during the, during the entire summer. The first spraying is usually done by hand, and the last spraying is usually done by hand. And the, the six in the meantime get sprayed with helicopters. They come periodically through the entire summer. The only thing that they are allowed to spray are fungicides. It's not allowed for them to spray anything else but that, and they do it in a very scientific uh, measurement. There's no adding just a little bit more of this or a little bit more of that which was something that a, a farmer could end up doing or a winemaker could end up doing.
There's one of those little trains I was telling you about. See how it's got a seat and then the, the back part oh, of it yeah. for carrying the load. There's another one. And they're all along here. Those uh, tracks to put in cost about 100 euro per meter to put in. But you can see that they can bend, they can turn. They're very, very flexible. When you put one in, you have a little uh, trailer that you can move that uh, train thing from one vineyard to another. So you don't need to have for each one of these tracks a train. with insect infestation? Um, actually, we don't. Uh, there is one moth that they do a, a pre-strike with. They have um, a little capsule that they put in there that, ha that emits a, a scent that confuses the male... Um, I guess it must be a moth. And when that moth is flying around, he can't find his counter mate. He can't find a mate he gets confused by this smell, and so they don't produce. We did the same they thing with Japanese beetles at home. What's that? We did the same thing with Japanese beetles at home. They use it. It's a pheromone. Type. Yeah, that's what they use here too. And and every year they go out and they reposition those things throughout the entire vineyard. Um, we had a couple years ago. We had something that came through Germany. It was called the red wine fruit fly and it was destroying grapes. I, I have a red vine at my house, and I didn't get a single grape that year. And what the, what the uh, fly didn't eat, oh, there's our winemaker. <laughs> that was Thomas. Oh. That's where we're going today, is to his vineyard, or to his winery. Um, they, they eat the, the juice, and once they get in there, they attract then the wasps. And we do get wasps out there, but the wasp will actually, they'll eat the entire grape, but they're not generally a problem. <laughs> Um, we don't we don't generally have a problem with any really difficult insects that would wipe us out. I've never heard of it. One year we did have a, a caterpillar that came into the vineyards and it kind of ate the leaves, which is bad because if you don't have the leaves, you don't have the nutrition going into the uh, grapes. But that was like probably 25 years ago, and I can't remember what that was even. It was something that just came in, and it and it went away. And it didn't make a, a real huge difference on our harvest. So here we are back in Finnegan. Finnegan also has a specialty of being, it's the, it's the only village here in this entire area that's predominantly Protestant. Normally all these villages around here are Catholic. And the people that lived here in the past married within the village. And so a lot of the names that you see here are the same family names. There's going to be a lot of Krugers, a lot of Knebels, Löwenstein. There's certain names that happen time and time again, and that's because of their being Protestant here. In earlier times, people didn't marry outside their religion. It just was not a, a, anything that anyone did. Oh, no. Another thing that Vinnigan has is they have one of the oldest and longest uh, wine festivals that uh, here in Germany, and every year they have the festival at the end of August, beginning of September, and they take their, and the, the people oh, have a little competition about who can do the, the, the nicest uh, flower boxes for that year. Uh, yeah. um, and every year at the end of the wine festival, they do announce who the, the winner was for that year. And here you can see the houses are a little spaced. Where we're going for the wine tasting is going to be a, a lot closer together. There's, a, there's not much space between, it's wall on wall, roof on roof. Out here it's more of what we know in our you know, normal villages where the houses are standing free again and they're having a bit of a yard and fence on each uh, property. Oh look, there's a, a glider going up. Where we're headed right now, there's a small airport up there. So that's where they've taken Another thing that happens when you have a, a very close town like that is some people, these people don't need a garden somewhere, but the people in the middle of town didn't have any possibility for a garden. So sometimes they would come outside of town, and you'll find this throughout all of Germany, these little Schreber gardens. Schreber garden 
is outside the village, and people can do, uh, they can have their hobbies there, like some people will store firewood. This first garden here has a lot of firewood.